all they have left the fundamental question. Whose money is the administration seeking to spend? As Conservatives, we believe it's money earned by hard-working people should be spent by them on their ambitions and aspirations themselves and their families. Now, anything taken from them in council or any other sort of tax then it's absolutely essential. Mr. Mayor, if this budget amendment is passed tonight, it'll restore the safety of rural children as a family, rural children as a family, result in a 0% council tax increase for all rural residents, retain the pensioners' discount in full, <coughs> directly reduce the cost of living for hard-working rural families, and prevent the council raising stealth taxes, firing fees and charges, improve recycling, start the process of repatriating loans given out at bottom and basement levels of interest to other councils, and I believe when that resource comes back, it should be used to pay down the current levels of debt, and maintain the entire council's commitment to a sustainable budget. Mr. Mayor, I commend our amendment to the council. Some of 
state pleased with this, but they're talking about the council facing a continued reduction in government funding at least until 2018 and the biggest challenges are yet to come. We too face the biggest challenges yet to come, but it gets more difficult. My colleagues and I understand that. Right, so Fred is doing the rounds in our party at the moment in its grim up north, which you probably have more to say in a few weeks. Well, I think this is quite what the leaders said. But there are key things that we believe we can fund and replace. We believe that the lighting can, should be the subject of an investment program. We are, I, I go along the roads and I look at the lights that are off. I don't know whether the lights are off because it's failed, the fuse has been pulled out, the hole is gone, man we haven't been able to connect to stay at some or some other part. And out there, the electorate are even more, if I'm confused, then the people out there are even more concerned and confused. Because there are lights off in various places, nobody even knows whether it's an official light off saving money on, or one that's supposed to be on. Because as I understand it, when members have objected to lights being off, an officer has to go out and find some other fuse to pull, turn another light off to keep within the saving. So it's a hit and miss approach which we disagree with and believe there should be investment in. Finally, I do want to look ahead. And I know I didn't catch what Councillor David said, but I do look at that and I look at what Councillor McMahon is saying in our work. It's a few weeks since he said that he was going to Agrees. He says, on too many occasions, we tend to present our case effectively, both within our parties and within the media, allowing ourselves to be characterised as prophets of doom or as advocates for the old trades. It's contained in last week's Council magazine, we've probably got in the post. But I do look at the wider world, but I also look at the world as it is, not as the world that I might like it to be at. I look at the worries that the leaders expressed. I look at the world that comes to the green discharge, and yes, I see an improvement in the economy, I see better employment, I see all those things, and I think we've got to get from now to 2015, 16, as we try and get stability and try and improve. Finally, I listened to the, the upset comments from Labour colleagues behind me, but I do read this document, Labour's zero-based review. There isn't a promise of you know, this, this form of plenty. But there, is, there isn't. Mr. Balls is saying that there is a problem. He accepts the problem. If he's going to make change, <coughs> if he were there. Can I ask uh, quietly? Nobody's got this opportunity. <coughs> if he was there, if he was in that situation, he's made it clear not much is going to change for the first year or so. So we need to get from now, build instability, make all those savings that are underway with the neighborhood authorities, those shared services. We don't accept that the Tory targets are boosting the what nine or to eleven million from shared services achievable yet. We haven't seen the way things go away in practice. We have reservations about the budget, some of which we raised last year, about the youth service and youth service and funding the sleeves. But we have concentrated tonight on the key things where we think things are going wrong that could be resolved in our lives. We believe the council would be wise to accept those changes. Thank you, Mr. <coughs>
by focusing on the tapping nerve as well to have been hard to get by this problem. This project shows very clearly that we in the Labour group know very well that not all the residents are in this together. The Denny recovery that Osborne and Cameron have to Councillor Green talk about hasn't reached people in some of our poorest communities in the country. That's rural residents among the poorest in this country. And that is relative poverty, that's outright poverty. It's not having enough money to eat regularly and heat the home. In my ward in Rock Ferry, a reduction in unemployment status means more people in part-time, zero hours, minimum wage jobs that leave them worse off, not better off. Reducing the cost of benefit means for them struggling with the bedroom tax. And in Rock Ferry, a third of all households in social housing are affected by the bedroom tax. It means having to find money they haven't got to top up the council tax benefit and worrying about the threat to their families if housing benefit is removed for people under 25. Greater opportunity for young people means one in ten of all young people in Rock Ferry are left idle, excluded from work, education or training. Mr Mayor, this administration, this Labour group, know very well what our job is, and it's to protect our people from the worst excesses of this dreadful Tory government and the policies that come from it. The leader of the council, the deputy leader and the administration have shown the difference between Labour and the Conservatives. The way the, spend, the savings have been managed and the spending initiatives are a clear demonstration that this administration is planning responsibly for a longer term future. Introducing the program of municipal house building, putting extra into improving our environment, protecting the cushion for those struggling with changes to council tax benefits and empowering local people to strengthening the constituency committee but at the same time, crucially, protecting rural residents from a further drain on our funds by agreeing to council tax. These are the policies that show that the Labour administration has a clear priority to protect our people and it is our people. And that we are very different from the cynical, headline-grabbing opportunism of the opposition. And the people of the world will see that difference. And they will make that choice. Mr. Ware, I'm so sorry, last one sentence. Um, we are hugely proud of this administration and this budget. <laughs> It's one for all of will. It's forward thinking. It sets a budget for the many. 
It sets down what we stand for and fills me with renewed hope for the future. I move to support with it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr Mayor, what do we see? 
First of all, absolutely no criticism at all of central government for the way they treated us in the will. Not aware, not aware about the way the residents in the will have been treated compared to residents in other parts of the country, and I'll say it again, such as North Dorset. So there's no new ideas, no vision at all, and what we do get is the old typical Tory tactic of when there's an issue, when there's a problem, attack the trade unions. And again, you single out the trade unions for attack the part of your budget. And it's ironic, Mr Mayor, I read earlier on today that the Tory chairman, Grant Shapps, has actually claimed that the Tories are the workers' party. The Tories are the workers' party. So that's the same party, Mr Mayor, who've made it easier in law to sack people, who've made it almost impossible for workers who've been unfairly dismissed to get redress at an employment tribunal, because you've got to pay around £1,200 to even go to the tribunal in the first place with no guarantee. Mr Mayor, trade unions and the Labour Party represent working people in this country, not the Tory party. <laughs> Again, Mr. Mayor, if you look at, the, if you look at the, um, the Tory amendments, the last 12 months they've been attacking us admit, as an administration for introducing a charge for garden waste. Now they want to keep a charge in principle now. They are in favour and they want to keep uh, a charge for garden waste. And already, Mr. Mayor, this year over 36,000 people have already gone into the garden waste scheme. The original target was 30,000, so we're well over that. 84% of the garden waste is still being recycled through the, uh, through the window composting process by will residents. In addition to this, more and more people throughout the will are now home composting, which is what we said 12 months ago we wanted to do, because that is the best way forward on this particular issue. If we can just touch on, Mr Mayor, another amendment in the, uh, another part of the Tory amendment, on dog fouling. They seem to think that the answer to solve the problem of dog fouling is to double the, um, the number of enforcement officers. That in itself is not going to solve the problem. What we need to do is have a, an approach of first of all education and also more enforcement. And I'm pleased to say that Will is one of 12 councils selected by Keith Britton Tidy to hopefully shortly go into an initiative to deal with the whole question of dog fouling. So it's on that basis, Mr Mayor, I will ask you now, I'll ask you now to support the Labour budget tonight. I've got no problems in supporting it. I'm very proud of it. Thank you very much.
With one hand they cut your lifelines, and with the other they try to silence you. Count up the choice tonight of three budgets. A Tory budget has nothing to offer the world that jeopardizes our financial position and that silences the most vulnerable. A Lib Dem proposal that puts potholes before people and ignores the cost of living crisis that they, with their Tory cohorts, have helped to create. And finally, a Labour budget that is sustainable, <coughs> is compassionate, and is fair. A Labour budget that builds new houses, that helps the most less vulnerable and invests in rural economic development. It's a Labour budget that I'm very proud to support. Thank you for coming.